Okay, so today we're going to continue our discussion of um, deep learning. And like I said, there's two uh, slide decks here, which I'll be kind of switching, switching between. Um, one is this slide deck I have, um, which um, has some figures from the textbook, the deep learning textbook we talked about, and some examples. We've talked about some of these things already, so we'll get there. We're going to get to the motivation. Um, and then the other slide deck is um, from Justin Johnson it's a few years ago, but he has a very clear um, bunch of figures. Um, this is from a course at Stanford, and um, often the very, some of the same examples we've been using, but um, just explained very well. So. Uh, I'm going to switch back and forth to those, but they're both available up there on Learn. So, um, as we've mentioned, there are many different types of um, deep learning, and uh, we've really only touched the surface of a few of them so far. Um, And um, what have we talked about? We've talked about deep forward networks. Like I said, there's been, um, these are kind of like old uh, originating versions, both of these. Um, the thing we talk about in, in SVM can be thought of this way. Um, so we're gonna talk about these next week. Um, that's the idea. This is 13S, if it's uh, lectures. Um, and today we're going to talk about yeah. same problem I had last week is how to find the convolutional ones. Well, there's many other types. Um, so essentially, um, it's a little less now, but at the beginning, um, like beginning, like eight to ten years ago, um, a lot of the research in, in deep learning was essentially trying to get different patterns of these things um, and seeing if that would work better uh, for something or changing one of the nodes to be a particular type of um, node that does something more than just um, the nonlinear thresholding like we, we've been talking about. Um, there's quite a growth in trying to add memory to them. Um, uh, this recurrent unit this is about um, adding time, so this is what we'll talk about next week. Um, I don't even know what that one does, um, but yeah. So today, the one we're talking about is um, is convolution um, and pooling. So these are these uh, purple, pink ones, the ones being used, and they're specifically focused on um, images. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess I had a couple of slides talking about these different things uh, that are listed in that diagram. Um, so there was some discussion um, last week about arrows going different directions. Um, there's these older models, and they're older, like they're the early 2000s. Um, and they were people at U of T um, were building uh, Boltzmann machines, um, which were trying to get at this idea of building deeper neural networks in a way that lets them support prediction and learning, but where the variables um, might be more interpretable. And they had arrows that would go kind of up and then come down, um, but through uh, a network. So there was still multiple nodes all connected, but you'd, you'd use the, the responses at one end and, and update them as you go backwards to the net. Um, so it's still kind of interesting theoretically, um, but they're not used in a large scale right now. Um, like I said, uh, about time, there's various different ways of dealing with um, time. Um, and essentially space and time are two uh, different things that you gotta deal with um, if you're gonna do neural networks um, in, in general data, right? Because we've got our input data, remember, right? And from our default point of view right now, these are just a bunch of um, numbers, right? They're just numbers. And then um, we're going to have some number of hidden layers with, you know, uh, a certain amount of connectivity between them. 
um, but we're saying these are fully connected now, right? Up until now. And then we'd have um, some kind of output layer, uh, which we can get to, to give us um, our prediction, right? And the output could be something different. I think we were talking about softmax um, or, or other things. And here we were talking about ReLU units and others. Um, that's our idea, right? But so the question then is, um, what if um, the input are images, right? Or what if they are um, time series, right? Where um, it's not just a bunch of numbers that are independent, um, but they have um, relationships that have a certain structure, right? Because here, one of the essential things, and it'll come up in one of the things we mentioned uh, as an interesting uh, example in each layer, right? An important aspect, um, and some of the uh, other models didn't do this, is what they were experimenting with. The important aspect is that there are no, um, there's no links between nodes, right? Um, right. So this, these no um, links between nodes in the same layer don't happen, right? We have independent nodes um, in each each layer. They feed forward, and these guys are dealing with only ones from the previous layer and combine them together, right? Um, so that's an important aspect, and some of these other. Um, older models had been not doing that. They had connections between them and things get very correlated then. And so the, all the stuff we're doing now are uh, where there's independence between them at that layer, but it's fully connected here. So you have a lot of um, essentially unnecessary or dense um, connections. And the question is, um, how do you do it if, um, why was I mentioning that? Yeah, because if you think about um, images and, um, so I can open another copy of this so I can see what's coming. Switched on you there. Mm. Right. Um, I was trying to see if the next slide had something uh, direct on this, but it's a little later. The the, the main idea here is that. Um, what I was trying to get at is that um, these types of data sets have something different in them, right? Um, they have relationships amongst data points that are important, um, and we have to deal with that somehow, right? So in an image, um, you know, a cell here is obviously um, somewhat related to all the, the ones that are directly around it. Um, and in a uh, time series, you can have a uh, that some data point X is kind of related to uh, other data points before it recently in time, right? And so you want to have these kind of correlations amongst um, data input features. Uh, these fully connected uh, feed forward neural networks can't really deal with that. So you need a way to add these kind of correlations amongst multiple features uh, in a way that can work. So uh, these recurrent methods are going to be ones that do that across time. Um, but the ones that use um, CNNs are going to do things um, across space, like in images. Um, I've talked about this before, so I don't need to say it. Essentially, reinforcement learning uses some of the models we have, but for a different process. Um, and then, um, 
adversarial networks, we'll see a bit of this as an example um, once we talk about after autoencoders that you're trying to build networks that um, learn not just one network at a time, but learn multiple networks, all each of them targeting different aspects of the problem you're working on. Um, so there's um, kind of basically an ever increasing um, variety of ways you can piece these together. Um, but for this part about images in particular, um, it kind of uh, broke down um, from a parallel uh, set of research um, by mostly Yan LeCun and uh, a few other people. Um, at the same time, Hinton and other people were trying to develop and improve just a normal feed-forward network and were making those belts, Boltzmann machines and things like that. Um, these other group of people were trying to deal with images. Um, and uh, they made some kind of advances that were seen, but it wasn't until um, this one, uh, I guess it's almost 10 years ago now, um, maybe nine years, um, where they made this enormous uh, improvement um, in the, uh, the performance of that, on that data set, that, um, that people really started taking it seriously. Um, so the idea of why we need this um, is that um, we need something that can process images in a, in a better way, uh, but that won't get overly complicated. Right? So if we just treat a uh, fully connected network like I had there before and give it the pixels directly and learn it, remember I said that a neural network can learn any function um, if you give it enough um, nodes, um, that's true. It'll just be super inefficient to learn it on images because it's going to have to learn um, the relationship between um, some number of pixels that may not be near each other, right? So what's the relationship of, uh, let me say A instead, what's the relationship of A and, and B in this image um, when they're different pixels at different locations? Um, and there's no connections between individual inputs in, in the network, how do you learn that? You'd have to have many deep layers trying to learn that across space. So um, the CNN has a simple idea of trying to learn uh, basically a visual filter that apply at many locations. And the filter is the thing that tells you how, how uh, a pixel relates to the, the space around it. And you're learning these filters and you apply them everywhere um, and you repeat them. Um, this turns out to be more efficient um, because we're gonna use less links, less uh, weights in the network than you would for something fully connected. Um, and it seems to uh, to work quite, quite well for images. There's even some um, possibility that um, the animal, human, visual systems work something like this. It's essentially nodes in our brain that don't do exactly what they're doing here, but um, something kind of similar. There's these response nodes um, that learn about a neighborhood of pixels. Um, so it's being used for um, a wide variety of um, of applications, and there's even newer things since hit then. Um, so, I mean, the task for, for image recognition, right, is going to be, um, so the simplest one would be, say, classification, right, that we're going to, um, can you um, identify which of these signs um, it is, right? Um, and so there's only so many street signs in your database, um, and you want to classify you know, which ones they are when you're seeing it, even if there's low light conditions or different shapes. These are fairly simple um, as far as images go, right? Because they're just red circles and numbers and you should be able to read those off and maybe um, understand that, right? Um, but you could also have, um, I guess you could see these as either regression or um, classification, depends how many categories you have. Um, there's a lot of characters in the Chinese um, writing system. So if you just list them all out and you're trying to pick which one it is, um, that'd be classification. Maybe you're trying to predict um, what the right um, value is. Here, we've only got so many numbers that we're trying to detect, but we're trying to detect them in many different um, orientations and spaces, right? So how do you train that? Um, and then, uh, and this is like a medical image of tissue. Uh, can you detect tumors and can you detect normal um, tissue versus abnormal tissue, right? All of these are still based on images, but they're all going to have different um, challenges based on um, the input, right? So you got to think about 
these are black and white, right? So um, the Chinese characters, you want to learn lines and their spatial like kind of representation and and thickness of the stroke, but it's really just going to be black and white or grayscale. Whereas um, natural images in the world have lots of colors. You want to make sure that colors are handled, but maybe colors aren't some natural set. Um, like out in the world, they're like all the shades of, of pink, like they are in medical images. Um, each of these could affect the way you design the network um, and what method you choose. So um, the main idea, and we're going to have more pictures of this over and over again, but um, you start with some image. Um, every pixel in the image um, has a, a data point and it has some, some set of neighbors. This mesh is not very important. It's more about um, that every pixel has um, its location. But we're going to have um, layers for um, all the different uh, colors. If we're dealing with color images, you're going to learn CNNs and filters on colors individually and then merge them. But then we're going to be learning um, basically uh, filters on um, on the original images. And um, the idea is each filter does something to the image, does something about, um, find some kind of particular pattern, right? So it could be finding um, edges or lines or certain color brightnesses or, or changes. And it's gonna be learning those iteratively and piecing them together. Um, and um, what we'll have will be like this CNN part that does the filters that we're gonna talk about. But then you'd usually have um, maybe, actually I'm not even sure if that would be CNN or fully connected, depends on their image. It's probably still more CNN. Um, but then you'd have some um, fully connected layers that basically at some point turn these into just numbers, right? I'm just giving you the overall idea here um, at this point. Um, and then you still have your output. Um, so maybe you're going to have um, softmax or or some other thing um, to get you your your classification output, right? So everything we when we talk about so far in deep learning is it was was this part. Um, we're still going to use that, but the idea is um, how do you turn an image into a bunch of numbers that can be treated as normal input for for a neural network? 